Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about signal. What is signal? What are the different types of signals? Its classification, its representation, and mathematical equation. So, in general, what is signal? Signal is an entity that contains some information. It could be your speech signal, picture signal, or any other signal that you see in your day-to-day -day life. But if we have to define signal in terms of mathematics, then it is defined as a function of one or more independent variable. So, function can be written as, let us suppose yt is a function and that is equals to twice of t. As we are saying that it is a function of one or more independent variable. Here, y is a function of t. And it is a function of only one variable, this. And this variable is called as independent variable. Why it is called as independent variable? Because the value of this t is not depending on y. Whereas the value of y is depending on the value of t. So that is why y is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. The example of signal could be your speech signal, picture signal or any stock market analysis could be considered as a signal. So when you have to represent it graphically, so you need to understand where the independent variable will come and where the dependent variable will come. So this is the axis. This is the x axis and this is the y axis. On x axis, we will define the independent variable. Here is the independent variable is t. So, the t will come on the x-axis. And y is a function of t and it will come on the y-axis. Okay. So, this is the representation. Now, the signal can be considered as a one-dimensional signal or multi-dimensional signal. One-dimensional means if it is a function of only one variable, then it is one-dimensional. And if it is a function of uh, more than one variable, then it is called as multidimensional signal. Like picture signal could be a multidimensional signal because uh, the brightness of a picture signal is depending on intensity, contrast and we can consider many more variables. And in this course, this time will be considered as the independent variable. For continuous time signal, we will uh, use t as the independent variable and for discrete time signal, we will use small n as the independent variable. So, uh, next we will classify the signal as continuous time signal and discrete time signal. So, what is continuous time signal? As we are saying that continuous time signal, whereas time is the independent variable. Here, the independent variable is continuous in nature, means it is defined for all values of time. Now, you can see in this figure that this xt, the value of xt is continuous. It is defined for all values of t, means if you are defining the value at t equals to 0 and you are defining the value of t equals to 1, the value is also defined in between t equals to 0 to t equal to 1. One. So, we can say that a continuous time signal or analog signal is defined for a continuum of values of the independent variable. Similarly, we can define discrete time signal. A discrete time signal is what? A discrete time signal is a signal whose value is defined only discrete time. Here we can see that for discrete time, the independent variable will be small n. And it is defined for discrete values, means for n equals to 0, the value of the signal is this. For n equals to 1, the value of the signal is this. For n equals to 2, the value of the signal is this. Okay, so we can uh, conclude that the value is discrete. Now, you have to remember one thing in case of discrete time signal is that the independent variable should be a integer number means the value it means the independent variable is defined only and only for integer value not for the 
decimal value or any other value. It is defined only and only for integer value. Now here you can see in this uh, figure that it uh, at n equals to 0 the value is x0. What is the meaning of x0? It means the value of xn at n equals to 0. We can write it like this. If we are calculating the value of xn at n equal to 0 then it will be x0. If we are calculating the value at n equals to 1 then it will be x1 and so on. And this is the representation of discrete time signal and this is the representation of continuous time signal. You can take the example also. You can take one example of continuous time and discrete time signal and it is like uh, xt is equal to sin t. I think you all aware about of this function sin t, sin t. As I am saying that it is a continuous time signal, if I have to ask a question, what is the nature of this signal, then you have to first identify that it is a continuous time signal or it is a discrete time signal. So how you will uh, identify that it is a continuous time or a discrete time? by looking at the variable. If this variable is small t then it is a continuous time signal means the signal is continuous. It will take value for continuous value. It means the value of xt will be defined for all values of t. So sin t is drawn like this. Now if you have to draw the discrete time signal for this means if, we if I replace t by n so it can be written as xn is equals to sine of n then how you will draw this waveform you will draw this waveform like for n is equals to 0 put, put n is equals to 0 means you have to calculate the value of this function at n equals to 0 then it will be x0 sin 0 x1 sin 1 x2 sin 2 whatever the value comes you can draw the value on the x axis and y axis right so this is the representation of continuous time signal and discrete time signal so in this lecture we have discussed about the continuous time signal and discrete time signal and you know one more signal is also there that is digital signal. So there are basically we can say that three types of signals we have first is your continuous time signal. And second is your discrete time signal. And third is your digital signal. So we already discussed about continuous time signal and discrete time signal. Continuous time signal is what? It is continuous with respect to time. And discrete time signal is? It is discrete with respect to time. And the independent variable in discrete time signal is defined only and only for integer values. Now, what is digital signal? Is discrete time signal is digital signal? No, Dig discrete time signal is not digital signal. So first understand discrete time signal. Discrete time signal as we have seen in this figure that the let us suppose these are the various samples defined at different values of independent variable and so on. Now you can see in this figure that the amplitude is varying and the amplitude and the amplitude could take infinite number of values. This amplitude of this function could take infinite number of values. They are infinite set of values for the 
amplitude we can say like that but in case of digital signal the amplitude takes only finite values like this waveform so this is a digital signal how it is digital signal because at this point the amplitude is high and at this point the amplitude is low again at this point the amplitude is high again here the amplitude is low means dig so digital signal is a signal whose amplitude takes only a finite value okay here the finite value is only two either it is high either it is low similarly we can consider one more example like this here the value is high here the value is low here the value is here the value is zero here the value is low zero high zero low okay so there are three levels of amplitude so for digital signal the amplitude levels are finite while in case of disc while in case of discrete time signal the amplitude levels are infinite so this is the basic difference between the digital signal and discrete signal but how digital signal comes actually originally you have the continuous time signal originally the nature of the signal is analog signal from analog signal you get discrete time signal and from discrete time signal you get digital signal so it is done by like this continuous time signal is first sampled it is sampled then after sampling you have discrete time signal the original signal is continuous time signal after passing it through a sampler you will have discrete time signal and if you pass this discrete time signal to a quantizer then you have quantized signal and this quantized signal is again passed through an encoder then you will have digital signal so this is the basic difference between the discrete time signal and digital signal